What is up, everyone? Welcome to L2R2, a PlayStation podcast. My name is Fonzie. Joined by my co host, Cal Monroe from Across the Pond. Cal Monroe, how are you doing? It's been a little while, Cal. Yeah, back after some technical problems um, with with my computer, but uh, yeah, it's looking looking good. Although not as uh, as as upgraded as I was hoping. I was hoping to get Windows 11, but as we were saying earlier, I can't because my PC is too much of an old man, apparently. So <laughs> I'm hoping that they'll uh, roll out the red carpet for it soon. But uh, otherwise, I'll have to look at upgrading, which is never never fun. <laughs> yeah, I want. I keep hearing about like I watch a bunch of uh, YouTube videos on different like hardware stuff, the different people that kind of uh, review things. And it seems like the next line of processors and RAM too is like so advanced, it's going to mean a new motherboard and whatnot. That Like that's on the horizon, this new update, which sounds cool because everything's more powerful, but then it means like fully upgrading if you want to adopt to that. Um, but yeah, I'm a nerd and I will buy the newest cool thing. And I've just been like obsessed now with upgrading parts. So I'm like, I'm interested. Like I just bought this uh, new CPU cooler that has that little... It's the AIO it has a little, um, uh, what is it? The radiator thing included and it's too big for my case. So it, it's not actually screwed into anything. Didn't realize it. So it's just kind of hanging in there. It's, it's stable, but it's like, because it's too yeah. big, I didn't do the research. It's just there, but, um, I like it. So I'm going to keep it that way. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, AIOs are nice. I think they, they, they're definitely the nice, <laughs> nicest looking sort of things to have. Um, and they're good as well. Cause you can, you know, use the radiator to like impact your whole PC um but yeah they're, they're really nice to have um but yeah the one i've got at the moment uh like revs really hard so it sounds like a car the, <laughs> yeah. the, the fans on, on the on the radiator just just rev so hard i even downloaded some software that's meant to like let you control the uh revs of the fans and it just you know as soon as i open google chrome it's just like it sounds <laughs> like it's just screaming for death but it's like, it's hanging in there you know i had some had some issues with the SSD, which um, looks like I might have fixed actually, um, which I didn't expect because that my SSD is quite old, and I don't even know why I'm using it because I've got I've got a, another SSD re more recently. I've just been using this as like a Windows drive, which is uh, having its shortcomings now. <laughs> gotcha. You know what that reminds me with your PC revving up. I'll still see. I'm I'm always on TikTok for some reason. Like now I'm just a zombie there. But uh, I'll still see memes shared of PS4s, you know, floating into the sky, revving up because of the fans. But it's like, it's been eight years or whatever. It's like, are we still seeing that same classic thing? It's like, we get it. They're loud. They rev up. They yeah. jet into the sky. But it's, I'll still yeah. see that. And it's just, it's old yeah. now. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't think it'll probably ever go away either. I think, because obviously like it, it has to be loud because to that, that means it's, you know, doing its job, uh, hopefully. Um but uh, uh, yeah, it is. It is like just like an age-old joke now. It feels right. Like... Anyway, yeah. Well, how you been, Calm? Anything crazy going on? Uh, no, I just, I, I, as I said earlier, I uh, spent the weekend in London, which was nice, seeing some friends. Um, other than that, it's been working, and, and I've been, I've been actually been playing some games for, which is oh. unlike me. Uh, right. Of, of late, but um, but no, it's been really nice to to get back into into you know relaxing you know because like like yourself just recently moved so it's nice to get back into playing games at the the new place nice you know what i have a pressing question i need to ask you and i i mentioned it on twitter a little while back but um i'm very frustrated with the lack of a word for whether it's in between noon you know so we have morning good morning you have afternoon but there's that pressing time where i don't know what to do and i freak out and i spend too much time thinking about it but if it's eleven fifty nine, it's too it's too early for good afternoon, right? It's too it's too late for good morning. Yeah. But if it's twelve oh one, it's it's that's too we're still in noon. It's not uh, afternoon. So what do you say during that time? Or you're just like committed to that time frame. Once it flips over, it's now afternoon. Yeah. Well, I I think I think you know being from Britain, where you know we we, we speak the correct uh, <laughs> language. How dare you? Um. Yeah, well, it's normally <laughs> it's normally good morning up until twelve, and then from twelve it's good afternoon. Um, I get it, but it just feels weird, okay. man. There's got to be a special word there because twelve twelve oh one. I mean, we're still in noon. Maybe you, it's like a, maybe you found like a niche in the in the market. You got got to get <laughs> yeah. in there. You know, well, yeah, all these words have come from something. You know, why why shouldn't you get to invent a new one? <laughs> it's true. You know, it's my time. I don't know. I don't have a replacement. It's just like. Uh, <laughs> 
good noon, good noon on you, or like, you know, happy noon. I don't know what to say that doesn't sound dumb. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. something there, but, um, you know what? Uh, I don't know if you have any interest in the new Dune, but I just watched it last night. I do actually. Yeah. I really want to want to see, I've heard really, really good things. Um, yeah, I do really, really want to see. I think the only real memory I have of, uh, Dune, I haven't read the books, but, um, is I remember playing like an RTS kind of game. Huh. which had like i'm pretty sure i had like fmv like cutscenes and stuff i don't remember much about the game i just remember like the big worms uh, and yeah these these weird cutscenes. but yeah I, I think it looks great and yeah, i've heard it's um you know, it's been compared to things like lord of the rings which is a bit you know i, I don't know but as someone who loves lord <laughs> of the rings so much i don't think that's even like a thing to to compare it to but uh... yeah excited to see it um, i'm sure it's very good that's a good point i never for some reason thought about i always um attribute dune with the movie series that I'm trying to, you know, get it off the ground for so many years, but that'd be a perfect uh, video game. Like it's so deep. Uh, there's so much going on, a lot to understand with like the different houses and planets and the spice. Like that's, you could spend so much time in a game, an RPG tackling that. I wonder if it's licensing, maybe they've tried to throughout the years, but you think, yeah, forget the movies, just give it to, I don't know, you know, um, some established studio that could handle something like that. But yeah, I wonder why they haven't really tried. Maybe it's sort of needed something like this, you know, a big blockbuster movie to regenerate hype for, you know, the, the series. And now I'm sure we'll see it enter the game sphere. I'm sure there's lots of, um, you know, uh, money opportunities there to, to, to sort of explore. And yeah, like you said, it'd be cool because it's got so much. I think just most things that are just based on books are like inherently fit for games just because especially like big fantasy things, because, the, you know, there has to be so much world building put into it that it kind of does um you know a large amount of the the work for, for something like a game um so yeah i think it could be exciting to see but yeah there's definitely it's definitely an rts kind of game um but it's super old i doubt there'd be any uh sort of any anything worth you know going to now but um but yeah definitely i think that's like the only thing about dune i really know um mm. i don't know too much about it other than it has weird worms right which i was trying to we were watching it me and my wife i was thinking is um was beetlejuice first with the sandworms or was dune first but the movie of dune the the 80s one that was like 83 84 i don't think beetlejuice came till like the early 90s maybe late 80s so i'm thinking dune was first but that sandworm thing is kind of synonymous with dune but also uh you know beetlejuice did the same thing so i'm wondering where it came from but it's such a cool looking uh... monster character there's another film with that is it, is it tremors or something it's like oh right it's kind of sad that's 80s too well. yeah i wonder who's first with this because yeah. they all kind of came around I, the same i'm not time. sure when the book i'm not sure when the book came out um as well True. but um but yeah they, they, they are like a very they're like such a cool sort of monster but they're not in enough you kind of have them in like the the third hobbit as well and they sort of uh, dive through the the mountains um really but yeah that yeah i'm not sure where, where it sort of originated from it is quite a it kind of seems maybe like um uh what's his name the the guy who sort of writes about cthulhu oh yeah hr something no um hp lovecraft yes hp lovecraft that's it yeah yeah almost like you know something something uh like that right yeah no it's uh i watched it it's it's dope it is the first couple of maybe like the first 30 minutes hour they have to set up set up a lot and i i knew that going in but they're setting up so much you're just like okay, I think that means something, but I have no idea what's going on. But once you stick in, um, you yeah. know, everything set, settles in, you're able to understand the characters and it's really good. And it's some of, some of the best cinematography I've ever seen in my life. It is nuts. And I forget that the same director that did Blade Runner, was it 2022 or the, that newest uh, re remake or yeah, yeah. Um, sequel? He It's the same director. And so he's just, he's able to take these franchises and, you know, bring them to life and, and reiterate and stuff. And it's really awesome, really good. I'm hoping it, it makes it actually sells well because they're they've been waiting to do the sequel until to see the the sales on this. But it's also releasing digitally. That's how we watch it at home. So it's on HBO Max and in theaters. But I'm just afraid, like, is it going to make enough money to justify them making that sequel? But I'm really hoping they do because it was dope. Yeah, it's it, it's. Um, I'm not sure how like the digital sort of thing is going to affect the box office. Cause I don't know whether it makes it better because people who you know maybe can't be asked to go out to the cinema um it gives them easier access to it so maybe more people get it you know people might be less likely to illegally 
download it because it's so accessible and you know like high res is such an important thing for people nowadays so i think if if the option to have it you know really really easily from your own home in like 4k is there then you'd probably opt for that over illegally downloading it or anything like that so hopefully it might it might help you know and and looking at how big it's been sort of such a massive hit with loads of people praising it already you'd, you'd imagine that a sequel's a, a no-brainer right and they spent so much money making it and man they really need the these other movies to you know flush out this world and they did a good job with this first one man i'm ready to go for this for the sequel which is not going to be for another if they make it it's going to be another like three years but man really good highly recommend it um and i've been playing uh far cry 6 i don't know if you have any interest in the far cry games but uh i'm digging it it is the same old far cry so it's like you're feeling that fatigue at this point but it's pretty fun yeah, I've I've, I've uh, got a few friends who have started it, and they're, and, and they're saying it's it's uh, pretty good as well. I'm I'm probably I probably won't end up playing it just because sort of like fatigued from Assassin's Creed Valhalla on games like that. Um, I mean, I, I've been fatigued in general with games the past sort of few months, so I think to go into something like that would be um, a bit much. But but no, I'm glad to hear people are liking it. It looks really cool. Um, but yeah, like you said, it does look just very samey. I've heard even like the UI and the the in-game like marketplace is all like the same UI as like Assassin's Creed. Um, so yeah, I'm sure there's going to be lots of that there. But but yeah, no, glad to hear people are enjoying it. I think they're I think they're games that always find an audience. Um, you know, they're always talked about pretty yeah, pretty highly. Aside from the normal, oh, it's a Ubisoft, you know, clone kind of comments that people make. I think they're always um, they've always some some positives in them yeah now i'm in the same boat with you where i've been kind of fatigued with uh maybe not the franchise in general but like just playing uh, games right now and this one mm. is kind of the perfect thing to jump into in my state of mind where you can kind of turn your brain off and play this game like or you can listen to a podcast the story is actually pretty cool but a lot of the stuff you're doing in is uh rinse and repeat, you know, you're shooting, you're taking over territories and whatnot. It's like a lot of the same stuff. So you can, you know, listen to something and just turn off and play this game and, and still have fun. Uh, the engine, I think it's like, we're at the, the end point where it's like, they need to kind of revitalize stuff. A lot of the bugs from the previous Far Cry games are still there. The wonkiness of animations are still there. It's, it needs some work or just some, just some updates. Uh, I think they, this is kind of the extent of this one. They, they really should go back and spice it up a little bit. Um, it is for, for all the different bugs and stuff that have carried over. It is one of the most beautiful games I've played this year. Like it's pretty nuts how incredibly gorgeous this game is. I'm playing on PS5 and, uh, it looks amazing. It does still have screen tearing happening pretty often. Uh, and, and I know that they, they turned off the ray tracing option for, for, uh, PS5. So I think it's maybe, you know, some, just some optimization, you know, behind the scenes needs to happen, but um, it still looks really beautiful, um, but it's playing like the previous ones. It's pretty much like a fresh coat of paint on these previous games. So um, okay. yeah, they need to spice it up and do something else, but uh, it is still fun. It's still worth the money, but yeah, it's, we're kind of at the end point on what they can do with this. Yeah, I think that I think that's the same in, in a lot of ways as well for, for the series. I think it was maybe even getting close to that with Far Cry five where they, they you know they do really need to revitalize it maybe like the way they did with assassin's creed um so yeah i think you're right this is this i think if they were to release on you know like a seventh far cry game and it still be that copy and paste you know same kind of engine even if it looks you know up to standard um yeah i think you're right i think they have definitely overstayed the welcome and and you know that it's on an, it's on a high note for sure like i said and, and like you're saying you know people like the game um so good to no, and now no, when when you know the next game's not going to be received that well. Um, so I think that that was a problem they had with Assassin's Creed, where it really got to the point where like those games were starting to become a bit of a uh, just like a joke of um, amongst like a lot of people. Um, you don't want them to do that to another series, right? Exactly. Yeah. What you been playing this this uh, past couple of weeks? Uh, so I've been playing uh, Bioshock Two, which I've been oh, I saw that. Play yeah. for, uh, for ages um and i'm finally going through it and i i absolutely love it um i think it's I, I can't really see any any reason to say it's any worse or better than the first game i mean and i love the first game um i don't know whether that's because i played the first game so much and because this is just all new and sort of fresh uh that, that i feel that way but yeah it's 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 great i mean it's it's got the same really great ambience and atmosphere um music and 
you know, dialogue and, and themes and everything. And the gameplay is, I mean, pretty much exactly the same as the first. Um, even though you're, you play as a big daddy, it still feels, you know, similar with the shooting and the hacking and, and everything. And they've added, you know, quite a few new features that weren't in the first game, which I think worked really well as well. So, um, yeah, I've been really enjoying that, uh, but finding it very difficult, I think maybe because I haven't been playing games much recently. Um, but yeah, I keep finding myself running out of ammo and uh, getting my uh, arts handed to me a little bit. But uh, but yeah, I've been really enjoying that. Uh, and I've also been playing uh, Back for Blood as well. Ooh, what do you think of that? I haven't tried it yet. Um, I really like it. I I, I got to play it um, last week, I think. I think maybe like a day after it came out or so. Um, and uh, it was a little bit buggy. Um, mo- not mo- mo- mostly in like the menus and everything. And I think it's got a few issues, especially with how solo play um, works. But uh, when you're in 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 game, I absolutely love it. I think it's really really fun. It feels great. Um, the characters are cool. The dialogue's a bit corny, but I think I think that's kind of on the nose, sort of supposed right. to be. Um, and yeah, yeah, I really enjoy it. It's, it's super fun. Lots of weapons, lots of you know customization, and a cool sort of progression system. Which um, I think the the fact it's missing from solo play makes it even worse because it is quite interesting and. For someone like me, I really want to like sink my teeth into it. But I don't want to have to rely on you know like a new games multiplayer servers, which aren't the best at the moment, or you know rely on other people. Um, so I'm hoping I've I've heard that maybe they're they're going to address that, but um, not too sure. But yeah, aside from that, it's um, really really good, and uh, really hoping to uh, jump into it again soon. Nice. Are you playing with buddies? Or you're you're focusing on just playing on your own. Uh, yes, yeah, so I uh, I played it with uh, one of my friends. Um, but yeah, like like I said, we've only played once. But when we did, it was it was great. Um, but I think the problem is when you're looking for, or from what I've found, is when I'm looking for a match, it's just a little bit more difficult to find uh, servers. Uh, but when there's two of you, I think because you're already in like a maybe like a multiplayer party or something, it, it seems to find games a bit easier. Um, um, so I haven't played it on my own yet, ex- aside from like the tutorial um but yeah which is why it's a bit annoying because if if solo play was was you know set up properly i'd be um just playing through that uh you know without having to worry about you know timing with uh, my friend or whatever gotcha gotcha yeah i've been hearing uh when it does work as far as if you're just uh randomly matchmaking matchmaking with people if you have you know the right uh, team players that have mics and are um, you know, working together, it can be a blast. Um, but I have mm-hmm. heard issues with the single player, just like you're mentioning. And I feel like I read the same thing that they were, uh, going back and, and, uh, adjusting that or going to focus on that. Is it uh, turtle beach, turtle rock, uh, studios, I want to say oh, uh, one of those, yeah. there you go. Um, but as far as, uh, cause this is, you know, the spiritual successor to, um, that, uh, series that people love, um, that I'm blanking Left on left for dead yeah um and it seems like it's hitting all the the right buttons for for those fans so it's i'm excited for them to finally get this game and yeah just tweaks that need to need to happen but it seems like the the bare bones are there and people are having fun um are you playing on i don't know if i already, already asked you are you playing on game pass uh yeah playing through game pass um i i'd heard uh sort of just before it came out that people weren't enjoying it or something i'd just seen like you know stupid rumors online that it was like bland or whatever um, so I was a little, I didn't have too much of high expectations, but because it was get on Game Pass, I thought I might as well try it. Um, and yeah, I, I, I have no idea where those comments came from because aside from you know the general issues that you're going to have with a new multiplayer game like this, I think the solo one's a bit more of something you can really criticize about the game because it's it's more of a choice rather than um, like a day one issue. Um, I think other than than those things, that the game is is great to play. Um, you, you know, the, the, I think there was a couple of times where I had like frame drops, um, but mostly only at the very beginning of your playthrough. So I don't know if that's just everything like initializing, but it, you know, plays really, really well. The the modern, more modernized sort of controls, you know, being able to sprint and aim down sights and things really suit it. And it sort of added hit markers in, which always like helps a little bit with with uh, these kinds of games. So it, the you know the the essence of Left 4 Dead's there, where you know you go to safe house to safe house. It's a bit of a you know, it's got a, a critical path, but you can sort of address it and how you want to. It's got lots and lots of guns and lots of ways to play, loads of ways to team up and and everything. So yeah, I have no idea, you know, what what the sort of gripe was from from these people, but I'm, I was glad to sort of see it review well when when those started coming out because it's uh, definitely a great game there. And and if it's anything like Left 4 Dead, which is 
you know had a shelf life of you know decades um i'm sure i'm sure people still continue playing it and hopefully back for blood will have the same so we'll we'll forget about all these sort of niggling issues right yeah do they match the intensity of left for dead uh, the few times i did play the originals i always got uh, filled with anxiety with how many zombies are thrown at you and it's just so crazy and nerve-wracking but you know that's what people want have they kind of uh, replicated that yeah well um we've been playing on the easiest difficulty i think because it it, it kind of acts like it has like a tiered difficulty system so you know you're, you're meant to play on the lowest one first until you get better gear and then hop to the next one until you get even better gear to then hop onto the the last difficulty um and yeah we're finding it a little bit easy at first you know it won't really have, weren't really having too much trouble but then when you get to sort of like the latter half of act one um it starts to really ramp up you know it starts to it's kind of like you know you know how to play the game now um now it, and it just throws you know lots at you and there's a lot of objectives that if you like you know take too long to do it or or you know just just don't don't sort of figure out what you're doing quick enough then you can really get overwhelmed and uh so yeah the, the difficulty seems pretty good from from what i've played um definitely gets hard quickly but um i was glad to be challenged be, you know get challenged on the the lowest difficulty at quite quite early point in the story too gotcha gotcha yeah that's awesome uh, i don't know if i'll ever play this because it does make me just so nervous because everything's going on and if i'm on a team too it's like i'm only weighing everyone down i'm just instantly a zombie somehow and um yeah. yeah but it is really cool and i'm glad people of that fan base are are having yeah. fun with it but I, I think on that note as well because that, that's something i've always felt with left for dead especially left for dead 2 which has obviously got such a huge community on pc and i feel like every time you go to play that you do feel anxious because it the people who play that game have stuck around are really good at it you know they know it like the back of their hand so it's very hard to fit into a match but I think we're back to back for blood with it being brand new. We we were actually finding that most of our teammates were not good and sort of. Yeah. But I think it's because it's such a new game. It's a it's a good game to get into early. I think because you don't want to wait too long and jump in when everyone's really good and they'll be shouting at you for for not knowing what you're doing. Right. That's always my my fear. And then I'll usually just turn everyone's mic off so I can't hear any complaints. I'm just you know having my own <laughs> good time. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, this reminds me of, we're talking about what we're playing. There's a game I want to play that I can't, that is uh, Resident Evil 4 VR just launched on Oculus 2. Mm -hmm. And I have the Oculus, but it's not supported and it's very frustrating. But have you been watching reviews? You've been interested at all in this, in the launch of uh, Resident Evil VR? Yeah, I I am super happy to hear it's reviewing really well. I mean, I'm sure it would because the game is, is awesome. And I think just adding VR to it is just a different way to experience it, which... I think I've said before, I'm super excited to to try. Um, yeah, I was going to actually buy it tonight um, and and maybe get like an hour in or so at some point tonight. But if not, I'll, I'll pick it up tomorrow. But yeah, that's that's one I'll definitely be be grabbing. Yeah, it has me debating just buying the the, the Oculus too. Like I I really want to try this. I played for the first time last year and loved it. And this uh, from different reviewers are saying like, this is kind of a, it puts uh, such a new perspective on it where it feels like you're playing it for the first time. Um, all the different, um, you know, just the VR experience itself, but still the core gameplay is there. Um, it just looks like a blast, man. I really want to play this and I'm hoping somebody hacks it, uh, you know, to work on Oculus, the original, but I, I kind of doubt it. And it doesn't seem graphically or, or technically that it can't run on the original Oculus. I think it's just some kind of deal they've made they want to push you know as many oculus 2 units as they can um but it's a yeah. bummer because this looks really cool well i mean it might you never know it might come to steam um you know people with like it's not just people with quests as well it'll be people with you know htc vibes or the valve index or whatever that want to play this as well um so you know if it comes to steam you'll you'll be able to play it at least that way through um your oculus quest one um so hopefully it, it'll do that because it uh, it makes more sense for it to be a timed exclusive to quest Two. you know try and get more more people on it and, and everything that makes sense but it wouldn't make sense if it was locked to it i don't think especially if there's more quest iterations to to follow at some point because there wasn't too much of a win between the first two yeah that's true the only thing that uh, makes me hesitate on that is with capcom bringing uh, resident evil 7 to psvr that's that thing has stayed there it hasn't moved and it's been, you know, years now. So I wonder if once they make their deals, they just leave it. So that gives me 
uh, not very much uh, hope for this thing moving on to other platforms. But it's such a huge game; you'd, it'd be a no-brainer to bring it, yeah, to all these different to to Steam and whatnot. Um, I'm hoping, but it seems like all we have is that last example. And if that's going to show us a the future, then they're just going to leave it on Oculus too and and not care. Yeah, I, I, I mean. I'd hoped I'd hope that the reason you know seven hasn't moved is because it was very proprietary to you know the hardware at the time we you know we're using the dual shock um and the the motion sense which I don't actually think works on, on a PC I don't think there's any third party motion sense I could be wrong but I wouldn't imagine that the motion sense works um on on a PC sort of with like third party software or whatever um so uh, I mean, obviously they could have like released like an Oculus controller or something if they were to port it over, but, but yeah, it could definitely go either way. Um, you know, it could stay on quest too, but, um, yeah, hopefully it'll, it'll come to more because that's such a massive game and, you know, people, people really do, do love it. Yeah. Same. I'm, I'm open, but we'll, we will see, uh, in the next coming months, we'll see what happens with that. Maybe a year, you know, exclusivity, but, uh, we'll see, but I'm glad people are digging it. Uh, one day I will play this thing. But uh, Callum, we can move on to some of the PlayStation news. We have a couple of uh, stacked up articles in the last uh, few weeks we've been meeting. Um, we got this first one here. It was pretty big. This is uh, God of War coming to PC. So I have the article here from Joe Scrubbles of IGN. 2018's God of War is on its way to PC, arriving for Steam and Epic Games Store on January 14th. Steam and Epic Games Store listings for the game appeared today, adding that the game has enhanced visuals, unlocked frame rates, 4K resolution options, NVIDIA DLSS and Reflex support. The game will support multiple controllers as well as mouse and keyboard and include 21 by 9 ultra wide screen support. Exact PC specifications had not been announced. A God of War PC pre sale was a top selling game on Steam when announced Wednesday. Along with the PC port news, Sony revealed 2018's God of War has sold 19.5 million units to date. Callum, how do you feel about uh, God of War coming to PC? Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's awesome. Um, I mean, I've it's a great game that you just want everyone to play so uh, the more places it's available the better and and i mean it's an amazing looking game amazing you know feeling and playing game so it's gonna be, be incredible through through pc obviously yeah same um i'm very excited for pc players uh, to experience this my buddy gavin um uh, there's so many playstation games that i try and get him to commit to like last of us god of war and so he's now finally able to jump in and play this and we've seen with like Days Gone and Death Stranding going to PC, all the different upgrades that are available now, depending on your hardware, you can just like fully unlock this thing. This game was already super beautiful on just like base PS4. So I can't imagine how good it's going to look on on uh, PC. And you have that ultra wide support too. I think this thing is going to be a looker for sure. Um, how do you feel about, you know, there's always the, the PlayStation trolls, I guess, that are online that are angry every time one of these big games goes to PC. I don't get it, but how do you feel about that? frustration how real it is i guess i'm not even sure yeah it's just it's just bizarre um i, I just don't yeah i mean we, we spoke about it before you know it's just so difficult to like put yourself in the mind of someone who who thinks that way it's i just i just don't see brands as like uh you know a competitor or a team uh so yeah it's um it's, it's not really something i can really understand either yeah same it's it's you know the more people get to play it the bigger this franchise gets you know we secure sequels and, and you know it's it's all good it's good for everyone if we if we have this and um especially like i'm also a pc player i'll buy this thing again just to see it unlocked and see the different options and and experience it again i really haven't touched it since it released um, i know there's a ps5 4k 60 frame upgrade that i jumped into for a little bit just to see kind of how it ran but uh, I'm interested to really play this on, on PC. Um, one thought I had with this, because before this was announced, and it was kind of rumored for a little bit, but we had Days Gone, we had Death Stranding going to PC, uh, Horizon. It seemed, I thought at the time, we're going to see not the first party darlings, but more of the the stuff that uh, could use, you know, so it could benefit from the added player base of PC and then drumming up support for the sequels. But now that God of War is there, I feel like anything's on the table. You can have Last of Us. I'm sure that's inevitable. Uncharted was announced not that long ago. So really, it seems like as long as enough time has passed and these games have maybe sold as much as they can on the console, everything is going to PC, which I'm very excited for. Yeah, I think it's probably comparable to Horizon, obviously having a sequel 
coming out um i think that's definitely probably a factor into the timing of it but yeah like you said i, I can't see why there would be anything that that wouldn't be released after a certain amount of time uh of course but um I, yeah i mean i i guess it's a win-win for them you know they're gonna get more people buying this game but also you're gonna get more and more people hungry for for the sequel would it be a negative aspect to have some of these huge games first party games launch day and date on console and pc i feel like the player base of playstation users there's a lot of overlap with pc users there like we're two of those but i feel like a lot of them stick with the console and they go to playstation just because it's all you know it's a it's a one size fits all all their games work there i don't know if it hurts them to release on pc at the same time for like say the next out of war and whatnot but do you see a future where we have these releases happen at the same time um, I, I, i'm sort of of the mind that i like exclusives because it means that they're just they're just made for one one thing so they tend to be you know tighter and um that they, they, you can always push you know the, the intended hardware to the limits you know exactly what you know you're dealing with and none of that's going to change there's going to be no sort of hidden problems with you know other platforms or, or or anything else to factor in so i like them from that point of view um but yeah i i, I think it, it's great for games to always eventually come out on everything um but i think it's nice to have that concentrated focus for the the initial sort of development and release um so i, I mean i don't know in terms of like whether it hurt the like the brand of of playstation i, I don't know I, I think if these games continued being the quality they are then it probably wouldn't but you know, I, I'm not. You know, I, I, I'm definitely not the kind of person to to sort of know what what's like sort of good or, or bad to do in, in in these situations. But yeah, for me, I I don't really mind as long as I can play them and they 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 look good and play well. That's the the main thing for me. Gotcha. Yeah, I've been uh, seeing online different conversations. You know, wondering is it possible that we'll see a little bit similar to what Xbox has done where their games uh, released across the board, PC, console, and the older consoles as well. So it seems like maybe that uh, isn't the, the the path for PlayStation, but it seems to work for Xbox. Although as a, I'm also Xbox player and PC player, so a lot of times if a game comes out uh, there, it's, well, I'm already getting on Game Pass, so that's one thing, but then I'm playing it most of the time on PC. So I'm kind of gravitating there because I have the option. So I wonder, does that hurt their sales? But also Game Pass is in the mix, so I'm a subscriber, so I'm not buying the title. I don't know, but I wonder if players, if they have that option, they don't go to console, they go to PC, and does that hurt sales? I don't know. We're both in the same boat where we have no idea, but um, I'm just wondering. It seems like they are they have the data, PlayStation, and they intentionally are going to wait on these games to launch them on PC for a reason. I th yeah, I think it definitely makes sense. Um, you know, obviously they want more and more people to buy their consoles. So having games exclusive to that console, even if it's for a limited amount of time, is going to draw more sales in there. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it makes sense in in that regard. But yeah, I mean, I, it's that that's the thing that you kind of leave that to the the companies, which is what I think people don't do is they try and sort of like take on. That, resp that responsibility on behalf of that brand right. to sort of get riled up about their decisions and it's just um yeah i think that that's the sort of the, the the kind of disconnect is you just need to let them do you know what they're doing they're, they're a company that care about money you shouldn't care about that either <laughs> yeah yeah true and they're going to make decisions based on that and yeah, it's a whole thing. Although you mentioned um, making decisions to sell consoles primarily, which is what PlayStation seems to focus on compared to Xbox. Um, this uh, last month, uh, PlayStation or PS5 sold more consoles than or units than the Switch. And it's the first time in like a couple of years that that's happened. Switch has always been at the top front, at least in the US, of unit sales. And so PS5 just, just now uh, surpassed them. It might change next month with that Switch OLED that is released, but um, it seems like People are buying PS5s or they're trying to get it. They're able to in some capacity, but um, they're selling. They're selling uh, really well. Um, although we keep hearing it like they're hard to get. No one has them, but somehow they're at the top of the list and they're selling millions of units. So I don't know how both of those things are true at the same time or it's just scalpers still gathering all of them, but people are buying PS5s. Yeah, it's definitely, I mean, personally, I'm sort of seeing more and more people get their hands on them. Um, so yeah, it's looking like you know they they definitely do trickle through, and then you know the people who are quick enough get get their hands on that. And I imagine once you once you do get one, you kind of stop 
you know running in those circles of joining right. the discord servers and like being at like the forefront of of information so um it, it looks like it, you know they're getting easier to get um which is good um but yeah like you said i think it's just like imprinted in our brains from the struggle of trying to get one that these things are just going to be like that forever <laughs> right yep all righty Cal, let's move to the next one here uh state of play news so we got a new state of play is heading our way next Wednesday. So this article here is from IGN. So we have Joe Scrabbles again. Sony has announced state of play broadcast for Wednesday, October 27th. The show will be around 20 minutes long. and will focus on upcoming third-party releases headed to PS5 and PS4. The show will include new looks at games we've already heard about and a few reveals from our partners around the world. A short PS blog announcement makes no mention of what games could appear at the show, but notably upcoming third-party PlayStation games include Final Fantasy 16. Little, little devil inside for spoken ghost for tokyo and stray um this is a uh, dope uh, i didn't really um i guess i didn't expect any more announcements for some reason although we're getting into holiday season it seems like they should have something to to talk about but uh, how do you feel about this upcoming state of play yeah i think any opportunity to see more final fantasy for me is exciting um it's almost like just every single one of these is just me waiting for final fantasy 16 stuff um, I'd normally obviously talk up uh, a resistance something, uh, but it sounds like it's just third party stuff. So yeah. I'll, uh, I'll leave that one for now. Right, right. Yeah, I guess we have to kind of uh, temper expectations. It's third party stuff. It's good stuff that's coming to PS5 and PS4. Do you think we see another state of play before the end of the year showing off the future? Although the last one that they showed off, uh, God of War 2, the first gameplay, that was really setting up 2022. So is this kind of just padding at the end of the year and this is it, or do you expect another announcement or state of play after this? I think I think we'll probably get another one. They seem to be coming in quite frequently, um, which I think is probably the the idea behind them because you know they're short and sweet, and um, and but they create such big talking points. Even if they're bad or people you know think they're bad or or they don't show the games they want, it still creates a talking point. So I think it makes sense them just to you know, pepper them throughout the year um so yeah hopefully we'll see another one um and maybe then we'll see our resistance uh remaster it's possible i mean uh it's not possible but i guess it is possible but um <laughs> or likely um there is still the game awards that's a huge event that uh games are announced and shown off so it could be that you know they're holding some big announcements for that one which i want to say is in no uh, december there we go so i got a couple months until then but there could be that maybe they're holding some stuff i don't know if sony has a big presence there in the past couple of years. Seems like Xbox is always there and then other like third party stuff. But um yeah, I wonder if they're gonna hold some uh, announcements to to that event or they seem to really like to control the announcements with their state of play. So maybe we'll see them less at the game awards, but that's a huge event coming up. Mm-hmm. Gotcha, Callum. We got this new one here. The next one rather is finally the trailer for Uncharted. Have you seen this yet? I have. Nice. Well, let's uh, watch it uh, and you can tell me what you think about it. But uh, this dropped uh, a couple days ago and I'm uh, playing the actual trailer now. But what do you think? Yeah, um, yeah I think I think it looks like fun. I, I'm a real sucker for like treasure hunting movies like National Treasure and things like that. Yeah. Um, so and I just don't think there's been many of them recently. So I think I'm just keen by proxy, really. Um, <laughs> I actually think it, it would have been cooler to to because it looks like they're really trying to like tie in the game like the big epic game scenes like they're trying to cram it all into one film and probably rather they, they hadn't done that and just tried to like do something like just with the characters but um but you know it looks like a fun fun flick it looks like it's got some cringy moments especially yeah. with the scottish guy at the end but um <laughs> yeah it, look, it looks like fun it's, it's you know i don't think we were expecting anything amazing from it so i'm up for just a fun treasure hunting romp to be honest yeah same especially with uh expecting stuff out of it this movie has been up and down you know trying it's, it's been greenlit it's been in production hell forever different directors and so it's actually finally coming to fruition so at least that they're able to get it off the ground um, but they've been trying for a long time um but uh, it does look uh, it looks fun i think if they focus on that there you go i do understand what, you, what you're saying with not having all these uh, set pieces across the entire series, like in one movie, maybe they're not expecting to be able to to make sequels, but that's not what Hollywood does now. They make a movie with the intention of continuing it on and make more money off of it. So 
Yeah, hopefully don't they don't try and jam pack everything into this one. At least there's a scene from Uncharted 3 where you jump off the or you fly off the back of that hangar. That's in this trailer at the very end. But uh and you have uh is it Nadine? I think her character's there. I don't know if I've seen um who Nate ends up uh, marrying. I forget her name. Uh was it Chloe? Oh, um what in the games? Uh Elena. Yeah, in the game. Elena, there you go. I don't know if I've seen her in the trailer, but maybe she is in there. Um how do you feel about Yeah, no. Mark- I- I'm not sure about the the characters. Um, I haven't actually really like looked into who's in it, just other than um, obviously Nathan Drake and and Sully. Uh, but I think that's the confusing thing is I think we all thought it was going to be like real, you know, young Drake like origin kind of story to start it off and you know maybe try and build it into like a big franchise. But right. it's now looking like maybe they are just going for like a just put all your eggs in one basket kind of thing. Um, so, so yeah, maybe we'll see Elena, even though it doesn't quite, I mean, it doesn't really matter if it doesn't match up obviously with, with the games, but yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how it, how it goes, but I'm not, I, I mean, I definitely don't have high expectations, but I'm sure it'll be, it'll be good fun. Yeah. it's a thing. Uh, I'm also a little, feel a little weird. They couldn't at least get Mark Wahlberg to have a mustache. You know, I know he's playing Sully and he doesn't quite hit it for me, but if he at least had that big old mustache on him, I think that'd do a lot of the work, but He's just Mark Wahlberg to me. So he doesn't like, he doesn't blend in at all into this series, into this movie. And then with Tom Holland, yeah. he's, he's maybe, I think he could be a good uh, Drake, but I don't know if he's as charismatic as um, the actual character in the game, like with his one-liners and stuff. This is just a trailer, but uh, just from that trailer, I don't get that vibe. Yeah, I think, I think he's more comparable to the, you know, the, the young Drake in the games, that in the, like the flashback parts, which... I think is why it's a little it's a little bit strange because you've got him like dressing like the older Nathan Drake, so that's the kind of comparison your your mind wants to make. When really, if they'd like honed in on the the young Drake stuff, then it maybe would have given a bit more leeway to not compare the two characters so directly. But um, and yeah, and as for, as for the moustache, I think that's an interesting decision not to include it. But you know, maybe it just you know maybe we'll 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 be proved wrong and it'll be it'll be fine but yeah it's definitely an interesting decision i'd be interested to know why they didn't uh give him a mustache maybe the end credit scene if you stick to the very end is him like starting to grow it and kind of comb it out a little bit (laughs) yeah they use it to to hook you in for the second one yeah i do like uh, in the trailer antonio banderas he's just a dope uh actor Mm -hmm. and uh such a menacing voice too like uh, him playing the villain i think i'm that's a that's awesome to have that. Um, but yeah, I'm a, I'm on board. You know, I'll watch it. Uh, I don't know if I'll be there um, midnight release or whatever. But um, it looks like, at the end. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it looks like if you're there to have fun, then I think you're fine. Similar to I watched uh, Venom two in theaters with my nephew because he's a huge Venom fan, and I didn't like the first one. I didn't like the second one, but I went there. And if you turn your brain off enough, it's fine. It's fun. You know, that's there's stuff going on and CG and whatnot. So maybe in the same vein, if you just are here to have fun, then you're going to be all right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think sometimes you just have to understand what kind of film you're going into um, Mm. because otherwise you can yeah, leave very disappointed. Yeah, yeah. I just got to chill out a little bit. All right, Calum. So we got that uh, announced uh, or revealed a couple days ago. Got this next one here is about PlayStation or PSVR's uh, birthday coming up or just happened actually. PlayStation giving away three PSVR games to celebrate the headset's fifth birthday. Jared Moore of IGN has the article. Sony's giving away three free PlayStation VR games to PS Plus members this month in celebration of the headset's fifth birthday. As part of the celebrations, it it has also revealed the most played PSVR games of all time. In a post on the PlayStation blog, the company says that PlayStation Plus members will be able to get their hands on the free games as of November. Sony hasn't yet revealed what three games that fans will be able to download. Um, so we have uh, just uh, an update on PSVR. It launched October 13th, 2016. So that birthday has has passed here. As of December 2019, it has sold 5 million units, which is pretty big. At the time, it was the biggest selling um, PS or uh, VR unit, um, which I didn't realize. But recently, so Facebook announced on March 2021, the 5 million Oculus Quest 2 units have been sold. So Oculus is surpassing PSVR. But um, what are your takeaways from five years now of PSVR? Yeah, I think um, you know, I have very fond memories of it when I when I first had it. I didn't have it for too long, but um, I think you know I, I've said I've said before that Resident Evil Seven is probably my favorite VR 
experience. I think there's a lot to, uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot to say about playing games with a controller in VR that are built, you know, for that, you know, experience. So I'm really hoping that we'll see some more things like that again with the PSVR too. Maybe not because obviously they're, it looks like they're bringing out uh, motion control things, but yeah, really, really great memories of PSVR. And I think just comparing it now with the Oculus Quest 2 is just such a, it's crazy to see how five years can affect, you know, technology uh, like that, because there's a, it's like night and day between the two, the two headsets, even between the Oculus Rift and the Quest 2 now. So um, yeah, it's definitely a, we're definitely in that kind of, a, we were in the early stages of VR and it looks like we're now getting into a bit more of a uh, experienced sort of uh, side of it, which is, is, is exciting. You know, who knows what it'll look like in another five years. Now you mentioned uh, the landscape was different five years ago with uh, when PSVR launched. It was at the time the most, you know, approachable VR unit you can get. You just need a PS4, which is still at the time, you know, 300, 400 bucks and then another 300 for this PSVR unit. But um, at the time, that was the cheapest option and the easiest thing to get into. And so I think that's was a key um, success for them uh, selling so many units. And um, it's a great idea. But now you have Oculus, you have that standalone ability with Oculus being able to um, download games onto itself or work with your PC. And so the landscape has changed. It's also cheaper now. So it's, a uh, it's way different. And, um, I was more interested in PSVR then than I am now with the Oculus being that to me is now the most approachable VR item where you just need that alone. You don't need a PC and Definitely. PSVR really needs to keep, compete with that. And I, I imagine they will, but as we go forward, I want to play a lot of these games that are locked to PSVR, say like Resident Evil seven, but the idea of committing so much for this unit, especially with PSVR 2 on the horizon, but the idea of committing so much to this piece of tech that only works here when I can have Oculus work with everything and work on my PC, it's it's a tough sell for me at this point. Yeah, it's um it is hard to to see how they're gonna sort of approach approach this again because like you said, it's a completely different environment now. They 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 don't have you know, the competition around them isn't massively expensive and isn't you know in its early stages and not very approachable so they don't have that kind of approachable angle to to take this time so it'll be uh, really interesting to see how they try and you know pry people away from from these devices that like the quest 2 which is just so approachable very affordable you know great games a much better higher quality than the psvr ever was um and you know in such such an affordable little unit that's so approachable and easy to use so um, we'll have to see see what they do, but I, th I think we, we've said before that the, probably the only way they could compete would be if it's one affordable, of course, and and two uh, will work without a console, um, similar to how the Oculus Quest Two works on its own, but can be optionally paired with a PC. It'd be good if the PSVR Two can work standalone, almost like a Vita kind of replacement. Obviously, yep. very different, but that kind of fill that void of like another PlayStation separate, you know, thing. Uh, and then of course, pairing it, everything's USB-C now, you know, Thunderbolt, whatever. Um, if it just plug one of them into a PS5, and then you can go away and play all these more powerful games or whatever. I think that's the only way for me that I could be swayed. Um, but you know, that they're definitely going to have to approach things very differently to the way they did originally. I think uh wireless capability is very possible now with, um, going into PSVR 2, if they can add that to where it can st uh, stream games from your PS5 to your unit wirelessly. With Oculus, you can do that. I have the Oculus One, and it's just using my PC over Wi-Fi, and I don't have crazy advanced Wi-Fi, and it works very good, where I think they downgrade the visuals a little bit, but otherwise, the you know, you don't, there's no latency that you can notice. It's all pretty much there. So, like, that tech is there. So, I don't see how they can't uh, implement that. And maybe there's a little hub unit like the PSVR has, but instead of p jacking into that, that just connects to your PS5 and we're good to go. If they can do something like that, even if they can't have it work standalone uh, on its own, where you can not have a PS5, if they can at least achieve that, where it's wireless fully, that's a big selling point. I know it can be done or I imagine it can be done. It's already done with Oculus. So yeah, the, the tech is has advanced. They need to just show that they've caught up as well in these five years. Yeah, yeah, I think as long as I don't think they need to, you know, beat anything necessarily. Um, I think if they're coming in at the same price as maybe the Quest 2, it needs to be, you know, probably a bit more powerful. Um, 
but then again it depends on how it's approached originally because if it is a wireless thing then are we going to want it to work standalone like the quest 2 does um you know will they be able to maybe get games like resident evil 4 to run on it standalone because that'd be a huge um sort of way of of getting people in um and obviously i'm sure they've got a whole host of games planned because they probably haven't they've probably been holding fire i guess for the psvr1 uh knowing that the two's on the horizon um i imagine that yeah they'll they'll really start to support it because i mean they're already showing by releasing a second one that that they want to support it because you know they didn't release like a vita 2 or anything so right we, we know how cutthroat they can be so the fact that they're bringing out another unit shows that they're probably gonna have a pretty decent lineup exclusively to it as well because it's again it's such a difficult space because the quest 2 is just miles ahead it's almost like sony are like google in this situation almost trying to you know get into the games console sphere um right. you know playstation are really entering into oculus's territory here and, and they're gonna have to really pull it out of the bag yeah i think they could find success really focusing on um first part or uh, i guess uh, exclusive title so you have resident evil 7 that's still locked to psvr if they don't have the wireless capability or any kind of standalone um playability with psvr 2 if they have if they can do any of that and it's still like the same connection as, as psvr was if they can at least really ramp up those titles that are only available on psvr then that's how they can compete as well by having these you know just like juggernaut releases i don't know what those are maybe they've been working behind the scenes first party wise with these titles or or securing you know third party vr games that are exclusive to vr psvr um if they can get alex on there that'd be nuts um so yeah maybe if they do what playstation has done is focus on our exclusive titles and that's going to be their main way to compete with all these new you know uh vr units coming up yeah and and it's it's going to be interesting because i in no way have any sort of reason to get any other vr headset um so i'd have to do they'd have to do a huge amount to to sway me over um so you know i'm not going to get one just because it's a you know a playstation vr headset or whatever it's it's really going to have to do something impressive to to make me you know change from a quest 2 to to it but we don't even know when it's coming it might be coming in you know a couple of years time when the quest 2 is a bit more obsolete maybe and True. there's even more things out there that, that that are you know stepping up so it's going to be interesting for sure. I think the VR space is 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 you know going to be very interesting for the the next few years. Yeah, VR is really taking off now. It's it's always when the tech gets cheap enough, and uh, that's when it's it can excel. More people can have it. You can you know just uh, streamline the actual manufacturing process. So now we're in the actual heyday of of VR. All those different people that adopted the previous systems, they did enough for for us to now okay we can jump in and these things have shown that they're successful and. Yeah, I'm excited, but you're right. Where I'm in the same boat, they're going to have to do a lot to get me to justify buying this thing that might only work with my PS5. So we'll see. I think uh, next year they announced that they're going to at least show it off. I don't know if it launches 2022, but when they initially showed off the controllers, um, they said they'll have some announcements in 2022. So we will see. Coming up on that. All right, Calum, we got the next one here. Some news on Deathloop. Deathloop patch 1.1 fixes PS5 specific issues and glitches. This is Liam Croft of PushSquare.com. It's been a hot second or two since Deathloop launched on PlayStation 5, but Arcane Studios isn't about to abandon the title as its first post-launch has just been deployed. It's a hefty one, weighing in at 5.21, 5.213 gigabytes, and it addresses all sorts of problems. PS5 specific features such as game help and activity cards have been improved, and so too has DualSense controller implementation. Alongside those fixes are trophy tweaks and corrections for various bugs and glitches. You can even look forward to changes made to Juliana, who will no longer hear radio conversations meant only for Colt. Uh, we have been talking about Deathloop for a while, and some of these glitches seem to have been uh, worked on. I didn't experience a, a ton of them, but they are there. Have you jumped in post this update? Uh, do you have any intention on going back to Deathloop? No, I, I think we spoke about about it uh, before as well I, I just i did like it it's just not a game that i just have any inspiration to beat really um it just felt for me kind of directionless just because i prefer uh, linear experiences well not, not completely linear you know but there's something that really has like a a tangible sort of like moments that that happen and then you get to sort of like the end or whatever whereas this is very this is the end goal 
yeah it's very sandboxy which i know people love it's just not not for me really and yeah i, I didn't really notice any glitches or anything um so this wouldn't tempt me tempt me back in because it wasn't you know a problem for me in in, in the first place yeah, I I hope to have the motivation to go back to this because I, I did have fun. It's a really cool experience. I love Arcane and I love that they do these weird games and they they are able to to push it and release these titles. And I'm a huge fan of the Dishonored series. And this is that, you know, on crack where it's just like all the action elements of this are turned to 11. Um, I, you'd think I'd, I'd, I would have finished this and want to play more, but something just about it. Maybe I'm just in the wrong mood right now, but... Yeah, I think I will eventually. This update is cool. Um, I imagine they're going to add some uh, DLC some point. Um, I don't know what that would be, whatever kind of refresh. But yeah, I'm in the same boat. I got to jump back in and, and play this. I just, there's so much stuff that comes out and I'm notorious for not finishing games. So I did get, you know, at least a good amount of hours in the, in, into this thing. But um, yeah, they're updating it. Great. I hope to go back at some point. Yeah, I think I, I, I feel the same way. I, th I feel like I've definitely experienced you know everything the game has to offer you know i got to the you know the apex of the general gameplay loop and i think i ended up killing it one of each of the visionaries as well so i think it was around then i was starting to think like if it's not if i'm not going to start getting more and more into it then i'll probably have to put it down and i think i ended up like stopping playing for a week so i went on holiday so that didn't help either but right um yeah i i, I liked it and i'm glad that i you know supported it because like, like i said i like i like it when these more riskier kind of games come out and and you know that's exactly why i bought it because it appealed to me that this was something a bit different it just didn't you know hit home quite as much as maybe i hoped but you know i know that a lot of people really really enjoyed it so um I definitely would say it's a it's a success at least yep we will see uh if we go back to it we got the next one here. Callum is uh, Grand Theft Auto, the trilogy definitive edition has been announced. So I have the trailer here if you want to check it out as well in the doc. Here's some details. We got uh, the trilogy definitive edition includes GTA 3, Vice City, and San Andreas. Updates include high res textures, better draw distance, improved GTA 5 like controls, mission restarts, and improved targeting controls. So it's going for $54.99 pounds or $59.99 in the US. All three games will support 60 frames per second at 4K resolution on PS5. Releases digitally November 11th and physical release December 6th. So uh, there's some news on the Game Pass uh, PS Now stuff. GTA 3 will be added to PS Now December 7th. I originally thought PS Plus, but it is PS Now. Um, while Game Pass will add GTA San Andreas at launch on November 11th. Um, Callum, are you excited to play these games again? Uh, I don't know if we've really talked about the GTA series, but uh, what do you think about these this news? It's a big surprise, actually. Um, I'm not the biggest um, fan of you know, Red GTA or just Rockstar games in general. I actually start tried playing Red Dead Two recently and really, really didn't get on with it. It, it yeah. sort of feels like just underwater constantly. Like everything is just so slow, and it's very just difficult to enjoy playing it, especially when it comes to, like combat and quicker paced parts. But um i think the same could be said about gta but i think i i think these look really really cool i, li I like the art style they've gone for you know they really it looks like they've really put some work in especially hearing that they've improved the controls which you know kind of counter to, to what i've just said is is probably an improvement on the ps2 controls but still maybe not uh anything anything too impressive but but no it'd be, it'd be really cool to to see these games i absolutely love vice city um it's you know one of the only gta's like i really really um adored and you know gta3 and san andreas are, are great as well and but, but i definitely don't know them as much as i know vice city so it's a cool uh cool way to to jump back into those as well um but yeah i i for one think the art style looks really really cool um i like the the sort of approach they've they've taken it's nice to see them actually do something you know to them at least right right yeah i, I really dig the uh new style as well i think it fits it it adds that fresh coat of paint they talk about the adjustments to gameplay. Um, this is really cool. I don't know if I will. I'll try it on PS now, I guess, or really Game Pass, where um, where GTA Three or uh, San Andreas goes. But um, when these games initially released, I was younger, and the idea of buying a game once and then having you know hundred hours or whatever of gameplay really appealed to me as just uh, just a kid with no income, right? But um, nowadays this entire series, like I'm not going to, you know, play all of them and finish all of them. So it just seems so daunting to me where it's, I, I dig it and I'm glad fans are into it, but I just don't know if I'm going to fully jump in and, 
finish these games, so I might as well just not drop the 60 bucks or whatever, but I'll definitely play on Game Pass, and at least to, to see the updates to gameplay, and they are great games. I, I, I beat each one of these when they came out. They're some of the best games, you know, in, in, in gaming history, so especially Vice City, that's probably my favorite as well. Um, so it's, it's cool. It's going to bring back, uh, bring some life to the series and get, you know, newer people into it. Um, but yeah, I just don't know if I'll be jumping in day one cause I just don't have the time to commit like I did in the past. Yeah. Yeah. No, I definitely mirror that. I'll probably definitely, I think I'll definitely play three in Vice City cause I think if I remember correctly, they're far shorter and, you know, less, less stuff to do than Santa. I remember San Andreas just being like packed with, with stuff. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'll probably play, but I mean, yeah, like you said, when I was younger and played them, I didn't really actually do any, like there was no progression really I made, you know, I'd, I'd eventually beat them, but it would take me you know, hundreds of hours because I'd just be like blowing up cop cars or stuff <laughs> like that for, for hours and hours and end. Um, so uh, now I'm sort of a bit more mature. I'm looking forward to actually, you know, play through them. And so I know that they've got some, you know, really wacky, you know, storylines and characters, which I probably didn't appreciate as much when I was younger um so yeah I'm, I'm excited just to kind of experience them again and and yeah the thing i like about the art style is you know people are saying oh, i've been cool to have like a proper you know in gta 5's engine or whatever but i think this way it kind of like chisels out their own kind of place because they're just such uh you know monumentally like famous uh experiences so it kind of keeps them away from from anything else it doesn't turn them into anything serious it kind of keeps them in their like little uh sort of style but but you know brings them to life uh, in, in a really different way i mean they they look completely different to any other rockstar games i've seen so it's so yeah it'll be it'll be really really cool a cool way to experience them gotcha yep we'll see that's coming out soon kind of got some news on uh, the new studio from uh, jade raymond here this is from uh last week so we got an update uh, here jade raymond's new playstation exclusive will include social elements and user-generated content. This is Jared Moore of IGN. As I flip over to the right screen, Jade Raymond has said that Haven's upcoming PlayStation exclusive game will include social elements and user-generated content, adding that it's being created by many of the devs behind the original Assassin's Creed. During an interview with GamesIndustry.biz, studio boss Jade Raymond delved a little further into what fans can expect from the game and exactly who's making it. Uh, quote, there are three things that were really excited, exciting to me, which are also pillars for the way that we're thinking about things, says Raymond. First is games as a social platform. The pandemic has proven that gameplay is a social glue that binds communities. The second thing is thinking about the remix generation, this age of self-expression. I think that has continued to go further with things like TikTok. That's another thing that we're thinking about at the heart of this IP. It is beyond user-generated content. It is about taking that self-expression and remix concept to the next level. Uh, so Cal, this is uh, Jade Raymond's new exclusive uh, game for PlayStation. She came from uh, Stadia um, a little while back. And then before that is well known Ubisoft for Assassin's Creed and, and Watch Dogs. So with this uh, breakdown of what they're trying to do, do you think, or are, are we seeing another dreams here or something like a uh, user generated content? Uh, what do you foresee this game is going to be? I have absolutely no idea. Um, I'm not sure it's, I'm not sure I'm too keen on, the sort of concept behind it um again i'm sure that there'll be a big market for for that but yeah it's just not really as you know i don't like playing games uh with other people online as much um i like playing with friends and everything but um i yeah i don't like you know meeting people you know strangers on, on games and, and interacting with them necessarily and um, not that i have any problem with it it's just not really the way i like to 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 sort of interact with people and, and and certainly not the way i like to play games i like to play games on my own my own sort of space and uh you know take things in at my own pace and everything it's nothing to do with i guess the human interaction side it just kind of forces you to play a game at a pace that you can't control um so it depends obviously how how she does it i think you know i think what she's saying is right and it, it, it's i think the pandemic's definitely highlighted how uh gameplay can you know be a really nice thing to, to you know uh get get communities together but yeah it doesn't excite me uh personally um but yeah and, and i don't have no clue what this could be i mean dreams is is probably the only thing that you can really compare to what the, the kind of thing she's talking about but she's also it sounds like she's really trying to maybe do something that hasn't been done before so maybe death stranding as well might influence the kind of game where you know people are helping out each other and and things um 
so yeah it'll be interesting to see what happens but um yeah unfortunately i'm a, i like to play my games alone <laughs> i hear yeah i'm the same person yeah where it's like although um yeah i like meeting strangers on the internet i just don't like playing with uh, strangers on the internet so a little yeah. bit different but <laughs> Uh, yeah. yeah, I wonder, this just makes me more curious as to what what they're talking about. Like, what are they actually going to implement? Is it going to be something like Dead Stranding where I made a bridge for someone, I got a thumbs up, cool. Like, that's the user-generated content. Are we full-blown making experiences for people, like Dreams? Um, her experience in um, game dev is uh, is more of like these open world or like third-person action games. So is it still going to have that, but there's, there's uh, elements that you can create or customize for other people? Uh, but it's not a full-blown multiplayer title from what I understand. So it is, yeah, it's just uh, fills me with more questions and it's, it's interesting, but I wonder what the hell are they making over there? Are they making their own social media platform uh, with Assassin's Creed or something like style gameplay? I don't know, but um, it's strange, but uh, she's a, a pro, a veteran in the industry. So I'm sure it's going to be dope. I just, uh, the more they talk about it, it's like, that doesn't uh, make any more sense, but I'm interested. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha, Callum. Well, we got the next one here. We haven't actually talked about the studio um, in a while. So we were, you're dealing with your um, shitty internet and just the apocalypse. And so the, this passes by, but we got a little bit of an update from Blue Box Studios, maker, the maker of uh, Abandon, which is that PS5 exclusive title. It had rumored ties to to Silent Hill and Kojima for, for months and people were roasting them online. And it's gotten to the point recently where it's some death threats are happening. So I have this uh, tweet from Blue Box here. So Abandoned Studio Blue Box takes a Twitter about recent death threats. So here's a quote from the <clears throat> actual post. The last few days have been difficult. Death, death threats are increasing online, but unfortunately also physically. And this has to stop. Not only does this affect us as a team, but everyone within our environments, other businesses, families, and everyone surrounding us. We're fully aware of the negative situation we have created. And we truly understand your frustration. But what we don't understand are the death threats. So obviously in no way should anybody be making threats like this to anybody for any reason. Um, so, and it's just unfortunate that they've been trolled as much as they have. Um, but overall, how do you, how did you feel about this, this experience with them, you know, talk about this game, the ties to it, that demo that came out that was just like somebody walking across a room after all this wait, how do you feel about the entire experience with Abandoned so far? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. It, it just feels like a big wind up, um, to be honest. Uh, I mean, that there's just no. I mean, the death death threats aside, of course, like right. the, like the, the the whole saga with with this is just. It does just feel like they're they're just winding someone up. I don't know if there's something bigger behind it, but they're definitely there's definitely something. And just the way there was like zero communication with with the the app thing, which I don't even understand what that is. Um, it's just all very strange and weird and something doesn't quite seem right um but yeah i mean to to sort of physically get actually angry at that, at that and to to the point of sending death threats as well i mean even just if if it's like making you physically angry in any way like that then obviously you need to sort yourself out but so yeah to send death threats is just ridiculous um i mean it's really easy to say you know what they're doing is stupid and it's it's annoying to to see and um you know they're, they're clearly trying to get a rise from people but yeah this is never acceptable and uh, you know people just they're completely brain dead and uh yeah unfortunately that's just human beings yeah especially on the internet with anonymity people are just the worst um yeah, just like you said, you can be angry about this or how they handled it for sure. But the idea of them of attacking them in this way is not cool. Um, to break down, you know, the just the stuff that's happened, um, it's I was in the same boat early on with you where it's like it seemed like they're maybe there's something behind this, the way they've been secretive and also the app on PlayStation. Like there's another game that has that integrated app that seemed very special. So it seemed like, okay, this is leaning towards maybe there is something is a, a misdirection and it's going to be some kind of big uh, release. But the way everything has been handled since then um, shows that it it's just this studio that, uh, you know, maybe didn't realize the hype they were creating. I think maybe originally they were kind of maybe playing around with the idea of, of teasing or linking to something that people wanted, say like with Silent Hill, but didn't realize it was going to take off the way it did and that it was going to kind of um, overcast the actual game that they are trying to release. And I think it was a mishandling of, of marketing there. Um, and it's just been... It's been strange, you know. They have that build up for 
the app that eventually came out. Then there was a trailer that launched there, but it was just a trailer of, you know, just the in-engine apparently um, walking, somebody walking across the the floor. It's just a lot of build up to this game that they maybe should have been super quiet about until they had something to show. Um, I think it was just, you know, misdirection or mismanagement with how do we talk about this game? How do we launch it? Um, I know the the main director took to Twitter and had these um, video diaries just kind of talking about stuff, updating people on what they're working on. There was even claims that that guy was CG at the time, which is like, okay, what are we doing? The guy's like, this is a, uh, it's, it's so strange. It's a weird, it's a real guy. It's just a horribly managed, you know, build up to this game. So um, it's a bummer, uh, but they're almost set up now to where it doesn't matter what they release. It's going to get again, trolled online, you know, unless it is Silent Hill, which it seems like it is not for sure. So uh, they're almost set up to to fail because of this. And it's, it's a bummer. Um, I am interested to see what they put out, but I just don't have any hopes. It's going to be, you know, child dropping or anything like that. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, it definitely, if it's not something bigger behind them, like driving this, you know, that is, like you said, like misdirection, then it feels almost like a scam, like to me, not, not taking anyone's money necessarily, but just getting your name out there and getting, mm. you know, and getting you know, Twitter famous or whatever. Um, it definitely feels like that to me. Simply also because, you know, they, they shut the, the app thing and, they had already shown the video before on Twitter that ended up being the video on the app. And yeah. they were saying that all the app was, was a way for them to release trailers and things like that. And, and, you know, there was a trailer they were supposed to be releasing that they were talking about, which we just still haven't even seen. And it's like, if it, if it's just a trailer, then just put it on YouTube or like, yeah. it, it just doesn't make any sense. It's just not. Um, and you know, what technical difficulties could they have deploying a trailer to an app? Like it's just, and and they'd already delayed the app anyway. But it was just, it's just really, um, yeah, it's it's stupid. Um, but yeah, it's no matter how stupid it is, like again, it's not. There's no need to get so like personally invested in in it, and right. uh, and to the point where you, you know, even I'd like even even messaging somebody that is saying that that it's annoying you, like, is still like a massive overstep. Like it's just, it's bizarre that people take these things to to heart and feel like it's like the worst thing that's ever happened to them. It's just, from my point of view, it just looks like it's, it's a company trying to, you know, make the most of this outrage. And they, they don't, I, I don't think until they have anything, if again, if, if there's nothing bigger behind them, I don't, I don't think they have anything to show. I don't think we'll see anything from them. Um, but again, like it's, it's just kind of like a, a funny thing that's going on on twitter that that's just really weird it's not there's no reason to ever threaten people or send abusive messages it's just not it's just not on yeah i would love to hear be a fly on the wall with their conversations with playstation they, they had to work something out to get that integrated app to have eventually they claim a demo releasing their elite the release right now that trailer uh, if you can call it that um they had negoti- negotiations talks with them to have that there so there's some kind of partnership i would love to hear what their take on it is now, like with the, how everything has unfolded and the, you know, the delays. And then you get this, this walking trailer. Like I would love to hear what they think of it really since that initial blog post where PlayStation did take to there to actually show off this game or announce it, they've really been super quiet. So it seems like PlayStation has just been trying to back away from it because it's been kind of a shit show, but I'd love to hear like, what are they thinking? What are they, do they have any input? Can they, navigate them to actually market it the right way. I don't know, but it seems such a weird like mishandling of this whole thing. And on the dev side too, with how they've decided to almost ride that, what, like you're saying, like there was this kind of take advantage of some of the, the, the buildup or the people talking about it. They, I think they rode that wave, didn't realize where it was going to go. And now there's this demand that they can't supply with Silent Hill. Um, it's yeah, very strange. Uh, do you think that they're just going to disappear? Like, or do you think they're going to actually supply a game eventually? I really don't know. I th- I think it w- will go either one or two ways. I think if they if there is a game and we do see a game, it will be because there's something bigger behind all of this. But if we don't, it, you know, if there isn't anything bigger behind this, then I just, I just, there's just too, there's just, it'd be so easy just to be transparent and like show something or they're just, they're just not like a normal studio. And I know they're, they're meant to be a small studio, but we have, you know, we have small studios that, actually release games that 
are way smaller than in in you know yeah. popularity and these guys haven't even released anything in fact they haven't done any they haven't shown anything at all um so it is quite farcical in in a lot of ways but we'll have to wait and see what happens i think if it does end up even if the, even if there is someone bigger behind us i still think it's just it's just i mean it's the same with death stranding you know i think we spoke about that before that was even released it was you know you had that live stream with all the hands over the screen and it was just like just i just can't <laughs> be bothered with it like it, it's yeah. really it's just so weird how secretive and uh like the the just everything in the games industry is just so weird with how secretive everything is and mysterious and trying to build hype all the time i mean it's it's like when you see fifa at e3 it's like people are gonna buy like the like people love games like it's not people are probably gonna buy them uh either way especially things like fifa so i think for for a company like blue box to have all of this attention and they haven't actually done anything when there's loads of other studios that deserve that attention i just think it's yeah it's a, a little bit a little bit annoying but you know there's no no way you should ever abuse somebody or send threats or anything like that it's just it's just embarrassing yeah it's the internet man the internet sucks it's cool you know you can order a pizza on it but also someone's sending you a death threat at the same time it's like it's just a, a great analogy for human beings too it's like we suck we can be beautiful and amazing and horrible to each other it's it is what it is uh, it's still not okay but um yeah you mentioned how the video game industry in general is so secretive with the with announcements and holding stuff close to the chest and uh the to to compare that to the movie industry they're complete opposite where it's Movies are announced years in advance. Look at Marvel, like having their full suite of movies announced. And maybe it's a, the whole like uh, shareholder kind of thing where they have to show them, here's where we're going to be making money. Here's what's coming down the line. But video game industry is just as huge. You know, they make uh, mil- billions of dollars. and uh, But they, uh, they still function in this way of keeping everything super secretive and marketing schemes that are, that are you know, that are secretive as well. And it's very strange to have these two different juggernauts, you know, operate the same, uh, different ways completely with marketing. Um, but yeah, in general, the video game industry is super weird with how they love to, uh, keep stuff secret forever. But I'm not sure why. All righty, Calum. Well, we'll end it there for the week. That's it for us, uh, here. Uh, where can they find you online? I am, God, I forgot my, uh, using it. I'm on Twitter at Bear Munro. <laughs> Bear Monroe. Alrighty, Calma. You can also find us on Twitter as well at Plastic Card Pod. That's it for us this week. We'll see you next week. Bye bye. Okay, let's go.